John tells me this is our eighth session of Hadley Matters, which is a huge surprise to me because it doesn't feel like that. It's been wonderful. But today we have the great honor, and I say that teasingly, but I do mean it also, to have Ann McKenzie, superintendent of the Hadley Public Schools, who for some reason in my mind I've dubbed Little Miss Annie McKenzie. What is that? <laughs> do you have a Scottish background? I do. Tell them. I do. I believe it is my father's parents who originally came from Scotland. Okay. And uh, both of my parents are both deceased. Um, but uh, yes, so my dad's family. So where'd you grow up with your parents? I grew up, I was born in Los Angeles, California, and I moved to San Diego by the time I was four. So I grew up in San Diego. It's a wonderful, it was more of a town when I was a child. Mm -hmm. Well, compared to Hadley, I suppose it was always a city, <laughs> but it felt more like a town when I was a child. And it's, it's really, really populated now. It's quite different. I moved here in 1998. Um, so I spent my young adult life in San Diego, California. And did you go to school out there to prepare for your life? Career? I did, I did. I went to the University of California at San Diego and uh, indulge me, I'm going to do this because I'll make sure my brother watches this. Um, and Mark, I do believe that UCSD outranks University of California at Santa Barbara in the most recent rankings. So that's where I went for my bachelor's degree and uh, then I went and got a master's at Chapman University and came out here to go to UMass. Mark, if you'd like to call to have a response to that, oh my gosh, our he number will. is. <laughs> no, he will. He'll ask to be on this show, so. <laughs> no. he will. He's going to be the next person yeah. I interview. Yeah, he'll fly out. <laughs> Sounds like a long standing view there. Yes. <laughs> Good. And did you take bachelor's, um, advanced degrees out there? Or? So my bachelor's degree was from UCSD, and then I received a, match, a master's degree from Chapman University in special education. That's in Orange, California. Oh. And then came out here for a doctorate in education. And that's why you came out here? Correct, yep. Where'd you want to go when you came here? What drew you out here? I came here, I was working at a school for, it was a specialized school. In California, we refer to them as non-public schools out here in Massachusetts. They're called approved private schools for students with disabilities. Yes. And I was working out there and a couple of professors connected to UMass came out, did some research and asked me if I might be interested in applying to and being a part of the program at UMass. And that's, I came out here expecting to get that degree and go back to California, and I really fell in love with Massachusetts. It's happened to a lot of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I think probably these folks who are here have been here, right? Your whole lives? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, no? Dolores, where were you? I was born in Maryland. Where were you? And I moved to Tennessee and moved to Tennessee. We'll have to talk sometime about my Kentucky heritage and your Tennessee time. <laughs> and you got your doctorate? Yes. At UMass? Yes. And from there, where, what job did you take? What did you pursue? Let's see. So I'm trying to remember. I was a full-time graduate student when I first started there. And I taught for one year at a, at a parochial school. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a little challenging to get your educator licenses to transfer them from another state. It's not as straightforward um, as people might think. So I worked at a parochial school, and then I worked at Agawam High School mm -hmm. in a class for students that were returning from a specialized setting for students with severe emotional disturbance. And they were reintegrating and, there? Correct, okay. yes. They were bringing students back from an out-of-district placement, mm -hmm. and those students, so that's the reason the classroom I was teaching and that's why it was created. Hmm. And then I uh, became an administrator at West Springfield at the high school and, um, and then went to work at the collaborative for, edu uh, excuse me, Lower Pioneer Valley Educational Collaborative in Hamden County. And somewhere at that point, I finished that degree. That took a long time <laughs> and, and yes. then came to Hadley. How long were you at the collaborative? And Eight years. What was your role there? I was the executive director. And at times I was also the director of special education. I, was, I had both roles for a period of time. 
and but the entire time was the executive director. Mm -hmm. And you came on then to be the superintendent here in Hadley? Correct. What prompted that move? I loved working at Lower Pioneer Valley Educational Collaborative, and we did have a campus. Unlike most educational collaboratives, we had a career and technical education center. So we had students in grades 9 through 12 on campus doing their trade school. Mm -hmm. So the, if we think Smith Vocational, the, the shop part of their program, mm -hmm. students from about nine towns sent their students to Lower Pioneer Valley Educational Collaborative really? to do their vocational training, their career and technical education. And they would take their academic courses at their home high school. Mm -hmm. So they spent half the day with us and half the day at their home high school. So I did have, there was a campus there, mm -hmm. but, and there were many programs for students with disabilities that were located in our facility and in various member district uh, buildings. We didn't have a traditional elementary campus, and I just missed having that experience of a K through 12 continuum. Uh -huh. And Hadley's a great community. I would often drive by Hopkins Academy on Route 9, and it just, it, it's just a great community. It's always had really wonderful schools. Is there an age group that you're particularly fond of or enjoy working with? Senior citizens. No. Um, <laughs> Wait, <laughs> who am I interviewing here? <laughs> uh, all of them. I mean, they're really, truly, they different, at every different age level, they are um, unique and they have their own quirks and they're funny and they're just delightful. <laughs> every age group is just delightful. Lovely. Yeah. Yes. Was it the fact that you'd driven through Hadley and it attracted you as a town that made you apply here? I would say that the town itself and the fact that it's a very small district and that was something that really appealed to me. So being able to know students by name, I mean that's not a luxury that many superintendents have. True. So if you think of a school district like Springfield Public Schools, I'm going to guess, I believe their student enrollment is somewhere around 25,000, I think. Wow. I think it's somewhere mm -hmm. around 25,000. Um, I could be off on that. So Holyoke is 7,000, just over, maybe 7,000 now. And so it, it, it's pretty challenging for a superintendent in a district that size mm -hmm. to know students. Yes. And I am in a district this size, so by comparison right now, we have 510 students enrolled in pre-K pre -K through 12. Okay. And I write students college recommendation letters. So I really? know... And I can write them. Mm -hmm. I know what you the know students them. have done. I know the student, and I can write from the heart. And I've seen the kinds of service that they've done for the community and in our schools. And that's mm -hmm. just, so that's what comes from a small district. And yes. I know parents well. And I, I don't know every single parent equally well, but I know parents well. And I know the staff well. In a small district, staff members, teachers, faculty, and staff um, certainly you know, they can problem solve things that are going on in a building, but if they see something in the district that makes them say, hmm, you know, that just doesn't seem right to me, mm -hmm. they can just come over and talk to me about it. And I don't know that my colleagues who work in really large systems, I just don't think that their job, I don't think that's possible with their job. So you have a small graduating class each year, mm -hmm. am I right? That's correct. Under yeah. 100? Oh, yes. Yeah, more like 50. Or somewhere between Stork. yeah, somewhere between 40 and 50, 35 to 50, it depends on the size of the class. What do you do with your students who are more interested in technical education or going on with a career? Do they go out to Smith Vocational? So it depends. Somewhere? We do have students who go to Smith Vocational. Mm -hmm. It's a great school. We have families in this community that for generations have been going to Smith Vocational, Grandf grandparents, yes. parents. Um, so that's one option, mm -hmm. and that means that they would take their academics and their technical um, training at Smith Vocational. Yes. And Smith Vocational also offers Chapter 74 approved, so it's very specific kind of training. It, you have to meet very high standards, it's similar mm -hmm. to what I did down at Lower Pioneer Valley Educational Collaborative. Mm -hmm. We do have, as a matter of fact, as of about two years ago, uh, I wrote a number of grants, and now at 
in our high school at Hopkins Academy, we have two what are called innovation pathways. So students who are interested in business and fi finance or in life and environmental sciences can take courses. We have a sequence of courses that they would take. They also have to complete a 100-hour internship. Mm -hmm. And we've had now, so we just started the program and then COVID happened. So we haven't had a lot of students go through the program. I think mm -hmm. right now, I believe we have just somewhere between 10 and 15 students enrolled in the program. And for example, I know one student's internship, she's really enjoying it. Um, I know this one because I helped get the internship or set it up. It's at University of Massachusetts Amherst and she's working with one of the administrators there and helping them with some of their marketing. Really? Um, so we do have we do have high quality college and career pathways. We have those innovation pathways. We're looking to add additional innovation pathways. We also have early college high school. So mm -hmm. students who are interested can be a part of a cohort where they get prepared to participate in dual enrollment. And they can do this now at no cost through early college high school. So they can take courses at Greenfield Community College and earn college credits while they're earning their high school diploma. We are looking to add other institutes of higher ed to that. I know University UMass Amherst is interested in being a partner with us in early college high school. My personal dream would be for students who are interested, it doesn't have to be everybody, but that eventually for students who are interested that you could graduate with an associates and a high school diploma at the same time if you desired. So there are examples of that in Florida. Mm -hmm. There are examples of that, I believe actually even here in Massachusetts in, the, in uh, Central Mass. So that would be an ultimate goal. And we will be applying for a grant for a Chapter 74 approved program in public safety. So right now, Good. we have a wonderful, as you know, you've interviewed these folks, we have wonderful public safety in Hadley. I mean, they're good, they're good to the community, they're generous, they're skilled. And a couple of years ago, we started talking about what can we do for students who are really interested in pursuing careers in public safety? Mm -hmm. And it was a it was, it was a mutual interest, right? Because also public safety has a deep desire to pull talent from everywhere, but there's a, there's a real value from pulling local talent. Yes. And so our um, folks in public safety started coming over and teaching kind of survey foundation courses in public safety careers to Ooh. Hopkins students. Mm -hmm. um, and now we have several students who do internships in the public safety complex. And they've done all kinds of things. As a matter of fact, they'll be, some of those students will be coming over and facilitating some crisis team and faculty team meetings to, they've done, they've done tremendous work on setting up our offsite evacuation plans. And so a lot of this has been student-led. So we do have that career pathway and internship opportunity at Hopkins. And we've had some of the students who graduated with that interest have gone on to actually, I think a graduate from last year, the year before, went to Fire Academy immediately. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, mm -hmm. So we've had students pursue that career. What strikes me, Anne, is that Hadley is surrounded by these communities who take great pride in sending 98% of the kids on to college, mm -hmm. four-year college. And what I'm hearing from you, among many other things, is you have a variety of pathways mm -hmm. from which these 30 seniors graduating have chosen along the way. Yes. And I find that very impressive. Yes, I think our faculty and staff has done a great job with this. Our community has done a great job. So obviously I've explained how this requires an investment of the community. The public safety pathway would not be possible without Hadley Police and Hadley Fire and the generosity that those folks demonstrate and their commitment to this town. They are worth every single tax dollar that goes to them. But I, I also want to be clear that the majority of students from Hopkins do pursue higher ed. They do go on to college. So we never see it as an either or. And actually, Good. the majority of students, maybe I shouldn't say the majority, because I, I certainly can't quote Smith Vocational's stats. But I would not be surprised if the majority of students in vocational schools go on to higher education. Um, what, what, we're, what we hope for is that 
we want students to have a real clear sense of what they're good at, what mm -hmm. they're passionate about, mm -hmm. what they want to spend the next two or four years studying and doing, and and what is it, you know, I believe that, that all of us are at, at our happiest when we're living a life on purpose, when we can see the effects of, when we can enact our values in the world, when we can see the effect of our work, observe the effect of our work mm -hmm. on the world around us, that we've done something good, mm -hmm. right? And we want students to have that same sense of like, wow, I'm really good at this, I'm really skilled at this, and this skill could really make a difference, right? In a small ways and big ways. So we just yeah. want them to go to college or career prepared. And for their parents, it, it's not cheap to send a kid to college. So we would really like students to have a clear sense of what they want to do. And I must say personally, I'm very excited by the whole two-year college, community college mm -hmm. push in this country because you're asking, I believe, students who are not mature to come up with purpose mm -hmm. and to discern their own mm -hmm. passions in life terribly difficult at that age, I would think. But by offering that panorama that you offer mm -hmm. here in Hadley, you stand a much better chance, I would think, of accomplishing that. Of understanding what I might want to do. Again, what interests me? What do I feel? Where do I feel my talents lie? What am I good at? Mm -hmm. Right? We usually enjoy doing things that we're good at. So what am I good at? Mm -hmm. What am I interested in? And the internships help a great deal with that oh, also. Because we can have an idea of what a, a career or pathway or job might be like. Mm -hmm. You spend 100 hours and you might say, yeah, I guess second thought. <laughs> no thanks. It's pretty miserable. <laughs> yes. And then at least you didn't go through college saying, wow, I'm going to get out in the world and do this in the world of work. And then realize, or not, mm -hmm. this is awful. One of the other things I'm hearing, Anne, is that as superintendent in such a small district, mm -hmm wears many hats. Yes. I heard you mention grant writing. Yep. I hear you saying I'm available to mm -hmm. the community, mm -hmm. to parents, to call me personally. Mm -hmm. Talk about the rest of your roles here in Hadley. Let's think about that. Well, I hope in all of that, I, I really see my, my role as, um, I try to keep it simple. So that is doing everything in my power to create the conditions where talented and, and caring people, we have a lot of those in the school district, where talented and caring people can do their best work. So my job is to make sure that they have the resources they need, that they feel appreciated and valued and seen, and also to create the conditions where children thrive. And part of that is learning, and part of that is being seen and known and cared for, and that their parents can have that confidence. So whatever hat I have to put on to get the resources that might be writing a grant, mm -hmm. um, to give somebody a bit of encouragement, to explain something, to keep students safe, like running pool testing, COVID <laughs> testing, to keep uh, students and staff safe, whatever, whatever is needed. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I will say, I'm not unique in that. I, I would argue everybody who works in the school department are, works that way. And as somebody who goes to town department head meetings, I would, I would argue the entire town functions that way. If, if I need something, I can call in any town department head to help me out. And if they need something, they can call on me. Mm -hmm. And if I know how to do it, I'm going to do it. Uh, and if I don't, I am going to give it my best shot and then say, if this failed, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the sticky wicket called money. Yeah. What portion of the budget do the Hadley schools get? So I meant to look up the exact percentage um, and I didn't before coming here. I can tell you the school department budget is just over $7 million and Jane might know the total budget in rough figures and then we could do the percentage from that. Is it about 20 million now? Okay. So about let's say it's about a third of it. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a lot less than I thought. And I say that and that's not mean being ungrateful. I mean, the town is incredibly generous with us, but you'll probably find if you look around that in most communities, it's, it, it's closer to almost half. 
fifty percent. Yeah, that's what schools I are usually the most important, expensive operation in the in the community. So, what are you not getting that you need that money provides? I'm hearing great things around people, would, staff, yeah. program. No, th this town, and that is not to say, because I'm sure there will be some folks who may watch this and say, no, the superintendent should always say, but this isn't enough, and, <laughs> and we could have more, and we could have more. And any town department would say, if you're asking the question, optimally, we could have anything, sure. Oh, yeah. Sure. Oh, great. sure. But uh, I would say the town of Hadley um, is generous and, uh, and very reasonable with its schools, and so there isn't... There isn't, the town treats us very well. The town treats Terrific. us very well. Terrific. And we are very grateful for every single taxpayer in town, every single town department that works with us, our elected officials in the select board. The town is very generous. And we're grateful to our school choice families. Right? Which is another issue I wanted to bring up. I'm not sure everyone understands school of choice mm -hmm. and how much of that is going out and how much is coming in from mm -hmm. school choice. So those two pathways, if you would take yeah. us along those a little bit. So school choice is a program in Massachusetts and it's, a, it's really a program in every state but it operates differently in every state, whereby any family can choose to send their child to any public school district mm -hmm. if, they're, if the school district has voted to um, participate in the school choice program which the school committees have to do in Massachusetts every spring so every spring they vote and they vote the number of slots or seats they'll open up mm -hmm. so once we've voted then uh, the slots are entirely on a lottery it's first come first serve mm -hmm. if there are too many well actually there's a deadline for application if we get more interest than seats available I literally pick out of a hat <laughs> D-Rex puts names in a hat, I pick the names out of a hat. And that's because it has to be a blind lottery for school choice. Another one of your jobs. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, name picker out of the hat. <laughs> and and uh, so stu families can choose to send their children anywhere. They do have to provide their own transportation in, under school choice. That was one question. And yeah. uh, so that's transportation is not provided for school choice. And right now, um, and then this the, each, for every child that leaves Hadley Public Schools and choices into another public school district, these are not private or parochial or independent schools, Understood. these are public school districts. Public. Uh, the base rate is $5,000 per student and for every child that comes in from another school district, we receive $5,000 per student. And How are you doing? So what we know definitively right now is the number of students who are enrolled from other communities. Yes. We can only estimate the number of students that are out because those final numbers, we don't get those. I, I can't get into another district student information system to find the Hadley students. So I can, I can do hmm, who was out last year and assume oh. that maybe it's roughly the same. Okay. So let's say roughly uh, between under 50, over 40. Let's say 45 students were out last year. Mm -hmm. Last year we had 114 choice in, and my numbers right now it looks like we have, it looks like we have 147 choicing in this year. Yeah, so it looks like we're choicing in at a rate in to out at a rate of three to one this year. What's the attraction? Do you understand it? And oh, it's why? the superintendent. No, that's <laughs> entirely kidding. I'm entirely kidding. Like anybody in any other community knows. That was the a straight line. Is. I just laid it right out yeah, there for you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I would say the attraction are our schools and the people in our schools. So I, I think the world of our faculty, of our staff, mm -hmm. I think the world of our principals. Um, yeah, we have some really skilled administrators in the district, our director of special education, but Ms. Camuso, Ms. Dowd, Ms. Snow, um, and all of our faculty and staff, because children go to schools, right? You don't ask a child, what, where do you go to district? You say, where do you go to school? They right. identify with their school, they fall mm -hmm. in love with their schools, and it's the people in those buildings mm -hmm. that make all the difference. And I believe that's what's attracting. And our families, you know, our, our families create a welcoming environment. Hadley residents create a very welcoming environment for people. We had that event here this mm -hmm. summer, um, the, the event to celebrate kind of uh, 
diversity and inclusion oh. and the senior center helped facilitate that. It wouldn't have happened without the senior center. So okay. we had that wonderful potluck and games and, um, and that wasn't just families in the schools showing up, mm -hmm. right? And there were uh, a number of school choice families at that event. So the entire community of Hadley it doesn't mean that everything's perfect all the time. It doesn't mean that we're not learning and growing and always improving, mm -hmm. but um, the heart of Hadley is 100% in the right place, I would say. How do you feel about your special education? Because often that is an issue in school of choice. Mm -hmm. Somebody feels the Hadley special education department will do better by their child, or they feel their child isn't doing well there. Can yeah. you talk a little bit about that's a, a strong field for your background? Yeah, so I would say based on the revenues and expenses connected to school choice and special education, mm -hmm. so in addition to that $5,000 base, there's something called the special education increment. So we bill a district for every cost associated with providing special education services, and we get billed. Mm -hmm. So if a student with an individual education plan, a Hadley resident goes to school somewhere else through school choice, mm -hmm. we're billed for every single one of their services. Yes. For several years now, the revenues, so the number of students with IEPs coming into the district and the special ed increment we're receiving, has been far greater than what we're paying out, which would indicate to me that families with children with disabilities are choosing Hadley Public Schools. Yes. And I have said all along, if, if I could choose just one thing, just one thing that I, that I got to be known for, I would say it would be, I want families of children with disabilities to say, we want to send our children to Hadley, because Hadley believes in the ability of every single child in their unique abilities Hadley cares, mm -hmm. and my child will be a part of that co community and be included. Yes. Um, and so our revenues and expenses would indicate that we are attracting um, mm -hmm. families of children with disabilities, and if I could only be proud of one thing, it would be that. How long have you been here as superintendent? This is my eighth year, and they have not changed the locks, and that's good news. <laughs> and I'll try them again tomorrow. And you're not looking. No, I love Hadley. I love Hadley. Terrific. I mean, if they change the locks, I'd probably break the window. <laughs> I hope that my good relationship with the police would get me off with the come on, Annie. Just accept it. <laughs> good. Again, I'm going to take a break. Any questions out of all of that? School of choice, special education, anything you want to know? You got her here. Okay, let's move on to another thing dear to, I think, both mm -hmm. of our hearts. The connection between seniors and students. Yes. Is that important to you? Very, very. Thank you for bringing that up. That is a place. So I've said when I, when I came to Hadley, I thought this is a community that cares, like cradle to senior citizen. It cares. Yes. And some of the most rec the recent investments, we can see this is a town that deeply cares about its citizens, all of its citizens, because of the investments that we're making. This right. is a particularly dear to our hearts question, I think, yeah. because I think both Anne and I and the people here really feel that we would love a strong connection Absolutely. between young people and the seniors. Absolutely. So, so talk to we, us. you and I had had a conversation last week, and, and I would have forgotten about that part of the conversation and not because it isn't important, just because I forget things. <laughs> so I would, I also believe and would argue strongly that any education is incomplete that does not provide meaningful opportunities for children to develop intergenerational relationships. And there are things that we just cannot effectively or completely teach in schools and the value of connecting young people with people who have much more life experience with people who have experienced sometimes lived through things that they're studying and sometimes it isn't just about going out and interviewing the person who may have been alive during the Korean War or fought in Vietnam but it can also be 
just about being in the presence of a person who has accumulated life wisdom mm -hmm. that can't be read, it can't be watched on YouTube, it just has to be learned through experience. And there's things that, not only is that valuable in terms of actually teaching children, but it's incredibly emotionally supportive, right? To be in the presence of someone who can say, what you're going through I'm not diminishing it. I'm not saying it's not real and poignant and hard right now. But for someone who can say, but you know, I've lived your entire life five times. <laughs> <laughs> so what I can promise you is that you'll probably get through it. Mm -hmm. You'll probably get through it and so much more. Mm -hmm. And yes, we offer all kinds of things in schools and families offer this this kind of support and we offer counseling and other things but sometimes just creating those connections and having relationships with people and sometimes it's helpful that they're outside of your family mm -hmm. like to have a uh, a buddy or a mentor through the senior center that can say I, I can promise you nothing else but i'm pretty sure you're going to get through this because i've gotten through something like that mm -hmm like six times, and these other things, and, and it's all going to be okay. And there's um, something about hearing that from someone who's experienced it that makes all the difference. So I want, I want our, our students to feel a connection to other, to, to, the, to town departments, to being of service to town departments. I want them to do that, but I also, just want them to have relationships with seniors mm -hmm. in the community for the reasons I just outlined. It's, and some of our students don't have, they don't have grandparents. grandparents. I mean, my parents were much older when I was a child. I, mm -hmm. I was born with one living grandparent when mm -hmm. I was a baby. And, you yes. know, so some, some for all kinds of reasons, they don't have that. At the risk of putting you on the spot, mm -hmm. are you aware anecdotally in your system of these kinds of things incorporated into the curriculum? What kinds of things? You mean? Uh, uh, the connections. The connections? Example. Yeah. May, may I so, give you an example? Sure, of course, okay. please. Uh, when I was teaching, mm -hmm. I asked my students to interview their grandparents. Yes. I got such wonderful feedback. You know, I never liked my grandma. I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. no. So that sort of thing. Yeah. Do you know if that's? It is, and I'm not going to do justice to the care and sophistication with which our faculty and staff organize those opportunities. Okay. Because as simple as interview your grandparents, that can be a really painful homework assignment for some students. Yes. Because for a whole host of reasons, they don't have a relationship with their grandparents or they don't have Mm -hmm. right? right or they may be living in foster care they mm -hmm. may be living in a group home mm -hmm. um, and so our faculty and staff have created those opportunities and always made sure that there was a and here like we have a, a an adopt a grandparent right we have a we have surplus grandparents for <laughs> all of those that. or um, you know or maybe the assignment is more of interview somebody else's grandparent, mm -hmm. right? So the surpluses aren't obvious. But again, I'm not doing justice to how careful our staff is with that. So we, we've had that very example at the elementary school or mm -hmm. even in the upper grades. And sometimes interview, find somebody mm -hmm. who has actually lived through this experience that we're studying, um, inviting speakers in. Mm -hmm. um, and we have had social events. I always go back to this pool game, uh, like as in billiards, <laughs> that some Hopkins students came over here. And I believe the seniors won. Did you? I believe you kind of cleaned up. Yeah, so it'll be a bit embarrassing. Hopkins well, students, can we fix no, no, that? No, it takes a while. They can might beat us on the basketball court, but yeah, not the no, I, I expect, I would like Hopkins to produce a, a Tom Brady of billiards. Send that person over here. That's all you want, huh? That's it. That's it. I'd like to incorporate you two, especially at this point, because I'd like to talk a little bit. Uh, we're coming on what's usually mm -hmm. our 45-minute limit. Mm -hmm. But are there ways that we can think about expanding the connection? I mean, we live so close to each other yeah. between the senior center and there. So I'm going to invite Haley and Jane in.
with the UN if that's okay and let you go. And yes, we, there are ways. We, I can't say that since I've been the director here that we've developed a robust set of opportunities for students in, in Hadley to join our efforts or be involved in programs or create relationships with people who are regulars here. I, I do welcome it. There are some sort of built-in difficulties that are logistical mm -hmm. that we would, of course, need to think about. We, do, we have had high school age kids work, uh, do volunteer work, particularly over the summer. Like a lot of our food distribution programs, mm -hmm. uh, we've had um, the assistance of, of high school kids um, loading food into, into cars for people, mm -hmm. um, doing some lunch delivery, um, things like that. What I'd really like to see is a more uh, quality interactions like with programs. We have art classes, we could have, you know, younger people could help with setup, clean up, and be a part of the program and mm -hmm. just be side by side yeah. doing something fun mm -hmm. with older adults. And it doesn't have to be a teacher learner um, relationship, but more we're both participants in this activity that we like and we have an organic opportunity to get to know each other. So th those are the kinds of things mm -hmm. I envision. I will also point out that we are, we're, we've developed this community-wide survey um, called the Livable Hadley Survey, which is meant to assess the, how well Hadley is doing as a, as a place for aging in place. And we are going to need a ton of data entry when that's done. I, you know, so there are very practical ways that we could you know, recruit the assistance of younger people in straight up volunteer work. That doesn't create a relationship necessarily, but it would introduce students to a lot of data about what it means to age and what are the difficulties and challenges that come about with aging. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a ton of opportunity and it's undeveloped right now, but I'd love to keep talking about it. Agreed. And even around all of that and internships. So exactly. we've, uh, there are certainly students who are interested in business and finance it's not always for profit that they're mm, going into. Correct, so nonprofit right. and governmental work um, are things that our students are often very interested in. Okay, so if you're ever, yes, we could definitely brainstorm about developing a meaningful internship that would be valuable for both the student and us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let me ask uh, Dolores, Sarah, Nancy, do you have particular talents or skills that you would see using with the K to 12 kids? Again, I'm putting you all on the spot now. <laughs> How are you supposed to answer that? <laughs> no, no, nope, don't have a talent or skill in my repertoire. Sorry. <laughs> well, I think about you know this, the very typical reading to mm -hmm. kids, um, mentoring within a school, you know that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know whether there's any interest in that even. Anybody willing to speak to that? I want to speak to something else. But, 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 but. <laughs> it was the first question when you asked me and Haley. And, and then I forgot to go back to you. I certainly apologize. But you all have now have time to think. <laughs> Jane <laughs> saved you again. <laughs> I just want to point out that it's been a little awkward since we've been in our new building to have any kind of interaction with anybody because of COVID. Sure. But that seems to be, knock on wood, <laughs> going downhill. Um, or up here, we're going to see mm -hmm. the good side of that. Um, but I do think one of the things the students could offer seniors on a one-to-one -one basis mm -hmm. is technology help. Mm -hmm. Telephones, cell phones, computers, however that can happen, I think that would be a huge asset. And the kids would feel like, I'm really doing something here. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't know how that gets set up. But I think that it's something that we really should look at. It's an area of need. It is yeah. an area of need. And there are existing models that there are other senior centers that have relationships with high school aged children in that context. Yeah. I think with your whole uh, concept of moving toward an age friendly community, uh, the connection to the school would just be incredibly important. I agree. Yeah. And we finally have Anne making a note. note that. <laughs> Look at this. Ooh, She's being ooh, filmed. I think we can do this. this. <laughs> it just indicates that I too need help with technology because notice I'm writing on a piece of paper, yeah. right? I'm not entering something into a fancy phone. Notice pen. <laughs> I think 
think it was the high school that actually initiated the pool games. And I think once COVID is over, that's something we might, but we won't keep score on the wall like we did at the high school. <laughs> Good. I just need to win. Dry. I need to win and not <laughs> Just need home. to win. That's, that's the biggie. Anything else from you all? With all of this, do you think that th th what we're talking about, a connection between senior center and the schools, is something that we should pursue? I guess that's one question I'd have. Nod from Dolores, nod from Sarah, nothing from Nancy. Well, I, I, I think it's a good idea. I think that if seniors could be privy to some of their, um, you know, that they have concerts and recitals, and oh. that might be good if, if seniors could be. Um, involved in something like that. That's a good idea. You mean in attendance? If you don't have or like my family yeah. is far away from here, yeah. then I, I don't get to see maybe a Christmas program or a holiday program. I yeah. think that would be that would be fun. It, it, it could be at the school. It could be presented here now that we have, uh, you know, a large senior center. I think that would be to be involved in um, holiday activities. Um, I love the idea. See, I tell you, every time I get you to open your mouth, <laughs> something wonderful falls out. Sarah, what do you got? Let me piggyback on that because I know going to the concerts and the plays and whatever they've had in the past before COVID, you're, it's full capacity with just the parents coming. So why not invite the seniors to a dress rehearsal because it's daytime when most of us would prefer to go out than rather in the evening. Excellent thought. And I have the ability to get the word out. Yes. So I will mention that as well. So we have the communication system. All it sounds like we need for that is the communication to here that says this is happening. Right. Yes? Okay. And am I right? Anything else? That's very helpful. Thank you both. Those are great ideas. Yeah. One of the things we talked about too was uh, this lady has a full plate. Is that fairly obvious to you? <laughs> yeah. Wow. And in talking about this connection, I'm very well aware, Haley, that you also have a full plate. That is so true. my question really was around I wonder if there is someone in the senior center who might be available to facilitate this rather than laying it back on you two. What an interesting idea. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of volunteers. Uh -huh. Sometimes it's difficult to envision the roles that would be meaty like that. That would be, you know, yes. as different from a discrete task, you know, would be uh, program it. Yeah. But you know, it could be done. Even something as easy as once a week sending an email to you and saying, got anything for us, Anne, <laughs> yeah. that we can do? Yeah which would take no time, yeah. really. Yeah. That is true. Okay. Well, I think we'll be inspired by this conversation. Terrific. Anything else? Anne, have I missed anything that I you would like so. us to know? Thank you so much for talking with me. It's been delightful, but that I knew it would be. Thank you. This has been really great. John, thank you so much. As always, number eight can be put into the can.